So believe it or not, it is really possible to teach your little ones to discipline themselves. And here to tell us how to start is Parents Magazine Executive Editor, Chandra Turner. So glad you're here because I really need your help with this having a three-year-old. And you have a two-and-a-half-year-old. I have a two-and-a-half-year-old. So you know what you're talking about here. I think one of the most important things that parents can do to teach self-discipline is to set firm rules and expect respect. But in order to get that, you need to tell kids why you expect certain behaviors. How specific do you need to be there? You need to be really specific. I mean, kids work in absolute terms. So if you need, to, if you have certain rules in your house, you need to make sure they're very firm. Like when you come in, hang up your coat. When you take a bath, hang up the towel. Um, and you need to be consistent with them. What, what is really incredible about kids is that they want to impress their parents. Mm -hmm. So you need to really work with that. There was a study at University of Arizona that said that Children as young as 18 months have empathy and want to impress their parents. And another important thing is that you need to follow the rules too. It's right. not just for the right, kids. Right, right, Why is right. that so important? Right, right, right. Well, it's really important because, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know this, but, you know, it's easier said than done. So your husband needs to pick up that towel too off of the bathroom floor. If that's what you want your kids to do, you need to be making sure that both parents are doing the same rules. And then they'll see, oh, mom and dad are following the rules, there's no exceptions, then they will follow the rules If you don't too. do it, they're not gonna do right, it. Right, of course. Okay, right. so a good place to start is to teach them problem-solving skills. Why right. and how? Well, there's lots of things that you can do, especially with the younger ones, the two-year-olds. You give them choices, you say, you know, instead of, this is the pajamas you're wearing, you say, would you like to wear the red pajamas or the pink pajamas? Would you like to have an apple or a banana? Um, and this really helps them because they start thinking through things and thinking that there are choices and there are options and there's just not one way to do things. Because they do get frustrated oh when they gosh, feel they, they have so no power. Oh my gosh, they get so frustrated. They get so frustrated. They, well, they don't know how to express their emotions and so the whole idea is, is you're helping them express themselves. So if they're frustrated that their toy doesn't work, right, then you say, okay, can we understand why the toy doesn't work? Why do you think this toy doesn't work? And is it, could it be the batteries? Oh, and you can kind of see, you know, that-, that Putting you know, it together. Yes, exactly. Okay, so. patience is a big one. Yes. And that, teaching them to have patience mm -hmm. will help with their behavior, mm -hmm. but that's gonna be one of the hardest things. It is, I mean, patience is a virtue, but it's very difficult to employ. I mean, we're very busy, and so when your child is saying, mommy, I want more milk, I want more milk, I want more milk now, it's, you know, it's hard not to give in to that, but what you need to do is say, I'll give you the milk as soon as I finish unloading the dishwasher. I'll give you the milk in five minutes. And then you give her the milk, and then you say, thank you for being so patient waiting for your milk. That was very good. So they will learn to be patient. Sometimes you have to kind of connect the emotions with expressions. And so if they're on the playground and somebody steals their toy away from them, you know, and then they just throw a fit, which is what happens with my daughter, then you need to say, are you sad? Are you feeling sad? And then understanding that that's what sadness is. And the same thing on the other hand, if they're pushing somebody else to say, how do you think that that makes her feel? Do you think that makes her feel happy or sad? And so identifying those emotions helps them make the connection and ultimately makes them feel less frustrated the next time. As adults, we think, you know, this, we automatically understand that, you know, if Granny is smiling, she's happy, right? But toddlers don't necessarily make that connection right away. Like my daughter just took a big bite out of her three-month-old brother's finger the Ouch. other day. <laughs> yes. She was startled. She didn't realize that he was going to be crying that hard. And I had to say, Look at his face. He's crying. He's sad. And she didn't make that connection right away. And so that's what you need to do is kind of point that out to your to your child so they can make that connection. It was great to have you, Mr. Nice Yo. Thank you so much for filling us in on all Thank of that. You. And for more discipline tips, you can pick up a copy of Parents Magazine. Thank you so much for watching Parents TV. We'll see you again soon.